This is Spencer with Black Sheep Designs. What you just saw was our AR-15 speed loader in action. If you guys are interested in these, you can check the link down below. I sell these. Or if you want plans, that's what this video is for. So I'm going to show you guys how to make one. Let's go. Okay, so here we are in Carveco Maker and we're gonna get set up to cut out the top. So the first thing you're gonna do is from your corner, I like to make an outline and this is the size of the piece of wood that I'm gonna use. So my piece of wood was six and seven eighths by 24 inches long. So I set that and I set that on the corner so that way when we zero here, it knows where it's at. So as long as I put my item to be cut inside that square, I know we're going to be good. So you import your vectors. Uh, this is the enhanced cut uh, push block. If you guys want to cut that out, great. If not, uh, don't worry about that for now. We're really just focusing on the main body here. And uh, I'll do another video on how to get the uh, push block cut out. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the top rail cut. So that's this. So you're going to highlight this vector and here we go. I like that vector and we're going to cut it at 0.31 deep. I'm using a quarter inch down cut for all of these cuts so you can load one bit and you're good to go. I run it offset. These are my speeds and feeds. If you've got a belt driven machine probably go a little bit slower. Um, and then you just calculate that. All right, so bottom rail pocket, same thing. You're gonna highlight the bottom one. This one's going to 0 0.41 inches deep. All the same, I like to do offset, all the same dimensions here. Run that. We're gonna skip these. These are for cutting out the uh, push block. So the next one is going to be the inside handle. So this is gonna be an inside uh, profile cut go all the way through the piece of material, run the same feeds and speeds. You can run lead in, lead outs if you want to. I like to add bridges. It uh, definitely adds a little bit of safety there. So this little block that's in here doesn't come out and jam up in your bit. Then you're gonna calculate that guy. And then the last cut, fourth and final cut is the profile and it's gonna obviously drive around on the inside and outside. So this is why it's really important to make sure this thing's clamped down really good. Um, but same thing, you're gonna go all the way through the material. Um, when you go to put on your tabs, you can put them on the ends. I don't like to put them on the sides because you can see how thin this material is. So put them on the ends and that's why I cut these a little bit long. Um, and then you can use a flush trim router bit to trim those off at the end. Then you calculate that. All right. So let's simulate this and you guys can kind of see what it's going to look like. One, two, cut out the handle and then cut out the body. There you go. That's it. All right. We're going to go right into programming the Cutting out the bottom, let me get this situated here. So I just do this on two different vectors. If you, you know, I've got this set up so I can cut um, uh, four at a time on my Onefinity Woodworker. But for the purposes of this video, obviously we're just gonna do it on one. So this is how I do it when I just cut one at a time. I will have two layers. I'll put the top vectors on top layer and the bottom vectors on the bottom layer. So this is only three cuts, super simple here. You're gonna pocket out this uh, vector here at 0.25, so quarter inch. Everything's the same, calculate that. Oops. Second one is going to be cutting out the handle and it's the same thing as earlier, um, but we want to add two bridges like that. And then cutting out the bottom, same depth, same bit, really just rinse and repeat. 
and I also like to put the uh, tabs on the out on the ends of this one as well. Calculate that, and that's it. So we can simulate this for you guys really quick, just so you can see what it's looking like. And that's what you got. Pretty simple. All right, now let's go out and get this cut. Here's our stock setup on the table. This piece is six and seven eighths wide by 24 inches long, and it's 0.7 inches thick. So what I'm gonna do first is cut out the top. That's the more intricate cut. And then I'll put another piece on and we will cut the bottom. So let's get cutting. So here's a quick time lapse of us getting this thing cut out. And you can see we cut that top rail, we cut the bottom rail. This is actually cutting out the push block. And then there's the handle and there's cutting out the outline, cutting this top out here. This is what it looks like in real time. So this is 175 inch per minute, 75 inch per minute plunge. I'm taking um, 0.1 depth of cut per pass with a quarter inch two flute down cut bit. This combo works really, really well for me, really in all the hardwoods. I, I really leave this same setting for pretty much everything with this. I'm using a high country two flute down cut bit that's got an inch and a quarter depth of cut. Really nice bit, works really, really good. Definitely check those guys out. Here we are taking that top off. So we're gonna take this off, we have to cut it free. I use multiple methods to get this thing cut out. So I've got a flush trim saw that works really, really well. And then I use a hacksaw blade uh, to get into these tight spots. It works really nice to get in there because obviously the other blade is much too big to get in there. So here we are loading up the bottom. So this is dimensionally the exact same piece, six and seven eighths by 24 inches long. I get it clamped down super tight. You do not want these things moving. It, uh, it, it really makes a mess when they move. So lots of clamps. And then here we are cutting out the mag pocket. And then we're gonna cut out the handle and then just the outside. So this one's really quick. So all in all, this takes about 20 minutes to get cut out. So it's pretty quick. It's actually, it machines faster than the one piece, but the flip side is there's a lot of uh, post-production work you have to get done here. So obviously we're gonna go through we're gonna sand now. Um, it's really important that when you sand this top, you hold it and you pay attention. Um, and right there, I'm showing you that that's end grain. So this thing can break apart really easily. So you have to be very careful. It's kind of fragile until it gets glued together. So be careful sanding everything. Try to get everything as smooth as you can. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and get our glue applied taking care to make sure that the glue stays away from the inside edges of this top because the last thing that you want is to get glue squeeze out there. Once this thing's together, you can't get in there to sand it. It really makes a mess. So this is me wiping it to make sure that it stays away from the inside. It, you know, squeeze out on the outside is preferable and what we're looking for. Here we are. I like to clamp one corner, then go to the other end and then same thing, do the other side corner and corner and then once I get it all lined up right tighten everything down and then I'll throw two more here in the center and this is plenty and then wipe out anything that squeezes out make sure you get it when it's wet because otherwise it will make an absolute mess trying to get it out later very hard to sand so wipe up my edges clean that stuff up and then this thing's ready to dry after it's dried I use a flush trim bit and go through and just make sure both top and bottom are perfectly flush it makes it much nicer always be careful to make sure that your uh, bearing is always engaged because on that piece where the mag part is it uh if you forget that it's there you'll make a big old gouge in your part so pay attention to uh, that cutout that you see right there then i switch this just over to a eighth inch round over and give every surface all the way around even through the center give everything a nice round over it really you know is a step up on the fit and finish after that, you have to go through and sand everything again. Every surface needs touched. Um, I sand it down to 220 and that works really well. And then after that, I go through and I just apply natural Danish oil. 
This stuff is is really really nice. It works nice. The the finish looks good, and it's pretty durable. It's got a little bit of poly in it, so it'll actually dry pretty hard. So that's my uh, preference. All right, that wraps it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do, feel free to like, subscribe, and uh, we've got a few more videos coming out. I got a few more projects that we will have plans for, as well as physical products. So stay tuned, and we'll see you on the next one.